Hey folks, Mark Levin here. Now, before we dive in today's episode, I want to talk about something truly valuable, protecting your financial future with gold. It's called diversification. Now for that, I only trust Advantage Gold. They're the real deal with five-star service and a sterling reputation. So give them a call today. Call Advantage Gold at 800-900-8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Trust me, you'll thank yourself in the future. Now let's get to the show. Results may vary. Consult with your financial professional. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Levin here. Our number, 877 877-381-3811. All right, look. We're going to tap into this absolute insanity that's going on in Philadelphia. The dithering, platitudinous, vacuous, mumbling, jumbling by Harris and soon to be her sidekick, Walls. It's just a humiliation for this country. I can just see our enemies watching this and salivating. Let's tap in. Go ahead, Rich. Not having her government tell her what to do. Abortion. They should just call themselves the abortion party. Run as the abortion party. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Since the day that I announced my candidacy, I set out to find a partner. Now let's hold on. What, announce what candidacy? You've been appointed. Go ahead. A leader who will help unite our nation and move us forward. <laughs> a fighter. Minnesota and California will unite the nation. Sure they will. A patriot who believes, as I do, in the extraordinary promise of America. Mm. I thought it was a white-dominant society. I could a be wrong. Promise, a promise of freedom, opportunity, and justice, not just for some, but for all. See what I mean? See what I mean? by all these people are trying to pour over our border from all over the world. Pennsylvania, I'm here today because I found such a leader. Apparently she didn't find him in Pennsylvania. Governor Tim Waltz of the great state of Minnesota. You know, this is like the Trotskyites running with the Leninists. It's unbelievable. These guys are so radical left, it's not even funny. That's why AOC, Talib, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, are all wetting themselves as I speak. So, to those who know him best, to those who know him best, Tim is, is more than a governor. To his wife, Gwen, he is a husband. Oh, okay, that to makes sense. To his kids, Hope and Gus, he is a dad. Gus? To his like fellow Gus veterans, he is Sergeant Major Walls. Oh, there's a whole history on how he avoided service there. Did you see that, Mr. Producer? 
dropped out of the National Guard just in time not to be sent to Iraq. I'm just saying, if they want to bring it up, I wasn't going to bring it up. To the people of southern Minnesota for 12 years, he was congressman. How many of you have ever heard of him before? To Almost his none, former huh? high school students, he was Mr. Walls. To his former high school football All right, that's players. enough. I can't, I can't, I can't. We don't need this Wikipedia stuff. The guy is so radical. All you have to do before Google and all the rest of them strip the facts from your knowledge base, take a look. The guy is a complete radical, hardcore leftist who let Minneapolis burn. Even when the leftist mayor begged him to call in the National Guard, he refused And half a year later, he said it was a mistake. He saw what happened to that police precinct, and he just watched it. He did nothing. Nothing. And he's conferring welfare benefits on illegal immigrants. And I can go on and on and on. He is the carbon copy of Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. So they have a balanced ticket with the Trotskyites and the Leninists. There is nothing... Nothing that is based on American principles with this candidate or her. Nothing. Zero. They don't talk up the country. They're not proud of America. Our enemies are watching and they're salivating all over themselves. It's just appalling. This guy, Josh Shapiro, I know why she didn't pick him. She didn't pick him, and you know damn well she was having meetings with her closest advisors. She was talking to Obama, no question about it. Talking to to her husband and all the rest, saying, look, we have a Jewish problem in our party. If we pick a Jewish governor, we're definitely going to lose the River to the Sea crowd in Dearbornistan and all over the country. We've worked so hard to get that vote. We even boycotted Netanyahu. We even undermined Israel in a time of war. We're even withholding weapons. We can't now screw that up by picking the Jewish governor of Pennsylvania. Because everybody knows, even though I think he's a puke, but it doesn't matter what I think, everybody knows he would have been much tougher and Pennsylvania would have been much tougher to win. But she didn't go there. Why didn't she go there? Oh, it's the chemistry issue. Oh, it's No, it's not. It's the Jewish issue. The Democrat Party has a Jewish problem. A significant percentage of that party hates Jews. And it's about damn time... Jews who are registered Democrat better wake the hell up, and they better wake the hell up fast. As well as all Americans. That's number one. Number two, she doesn't give a damn about the state of Pennsylvania. I posted this hours ago, didn't I, Mr. Producer? Kamala Harris to Pennsylvania dropped dead. I remember when one of the tabloids in New York, it may have been the Post, may have been the News, I don't know. When Gerald Ford refused to bail out New York City, the headline was, Gerald Ford to New York dropped dead. It had a devastating impact. Well, Kamala Harris just told all those Pennsylvanians, I'm an old Pennsylvanian, told them all in western Pennsylvania, where the men and women work with their hands, where they get dirt under their nails, where they drill for oil. Where they refine steel. Where they dig for coal. She told all of those men and women, drop dead. You know why? Because there's nothing she can say that's truthful and honest that can get their vote. She has to lie and lie and lie. There's nothing she can say to central Pennsylvania and all the little industrial towns. Throughout central Pennsylvania. Blue collar workers. The heart of the country. There's nothing she can say as a Marxist Islamist to appeal to them. And she cannot appeal to Philadelphia and the Philadelphia suburbs, which has a significant Jewish population. Because in order to do so, she knows she will lose Michigan. Because the Democrat Party is built on identity. The Democrat Party is built on racism. The Democrat Party is built on sexism. The Democrat Party is now built on Islamicism, all the isms. And they made a calculus, and they had to work it through right to the last second. The reason this is being held in Philadelphia 
in my humble opinion, is because she was going to pick this guy Shapiro. But she was lobbied against it. And she started to think about it. And then she realized that could be a dangerous path. I cannot pick a prominent Jewish governor of Pennsylvania. I can't do it. Let's not pretend there's something else going on here. And then they flash, well, she's married to a Jew. I don't care who she's married to. Her political calculation. Not her marital calculation. Her political calculation was no Jew. That's it. That's it. There's no other rational reason. None. They're putting it out there. That's not right. She didn't get along with him. Sure she did. He was number one on the list. He fell to number two. She obviously got along with him. She needs Pennsylvania, but she's worried. She's worried. I can't do this because I might still lose Pennsylvania, even though I might win it, but I'm going to lose Michigan. And besides, she agrees with the Hamas wing of the Democrat Party. She is the Hamas wing of the Democrat Party. She is Talib, who she praised, and Omar, who she's praised, and AOC. That's who she is. That's who, and again, I don't care who she's married to. You know, if this guy, who cares about this nebbish, this moron she's married to? Another sleazeball, but that for another day. And in doing so, I take nothing for granted. The media are trying to rewrite his resume, rewrite his history like they have hers. Which is why they come in as empty pantsuit and empty suit. Because they're trying to rewrite their history. They don't want them to take prominent stands. The only issue they're going to talk about is abortion, abortion, and more abortion. And we have more abortions going on right now than ever before in American history. Apparently not enough. But it is it is a an issue that that provokes and upsets much of their base to try and get them out to vote. For the vast majority of you, this isn't even an issue. For the vast majority of you, it's by it's putting food on the table. It's making ends meet, maybe taking a little vacation. How do you get your kids through through school? Your car breaks down, you can't afford to fix it. For you, it's the basics. And while they're destroying the American experiment, they talk about equality. There must be equality. No, there must be freedom and opportunity. I listened to this speech as it was going on for about 10 minutes before I came on there. It's completely vapid. Completely vapid. How is she going to spur the economy? We have no idea. How is she going to ensure that the price of fuel goes down? No idea. We have no idea. How is she going to secure the border? No idea. Because she's not going to do any of those things, America. She is not there to serve you. She is there to serve herself and her fellow potentates, her fellow oligarchs. This is about the iron fist dressed up as a mitten. That's what it is. Zero policies on Kamala Harris's website, Breitbart, Joel Pollack. Two weeks into the campaign, nothing. There's a meet Kamala Harris section, a take action section, a a store for campaign merchandise, and of course, a donate button. But as far as policies, there's absolutely nothing on the website. In addressing campaign headquarters last month, she defined her campaign loosely as a quest for a better future. She did it in her speech here as well. Oh, there'll be policies. She'll, she'll throw them out there here and there. Everybody has a right to health care. I don't even know what that means. So what do we do? The guy who's standing next to her, who seems to have a real nervous habit, Mr. Brady, he can't stand still. Have you noticed this? He's walking all over the damn place like he's... He has to go to the rest. Yeah, he's a weirdo. He's a weirdo. It's a crackpot. In any event, 
he and she want to take your hard-earned money and provide free health care to illegal aliens. He and she want to provide free college education to illegal aliens. What's that all about? Now, this country can't sustain that. We have a massive welfare state. It's already out of control. It's already broke. How much more are we going to spend? How much more inflation is going to be? We have people in this country, we call them American citizens, who need help, who need support. If we're going to spend resources, we spend it on our own people. Our own people, American citizens. You don't throw the doors wide open so anybody can come. Over 10 million foreigners have come into this country They're getting welfare benefits of all kinds for having stepped into the country. That's it. But it's a good day. It's a good day. The Democrat Party has rammed Kamala Harris down our throats. And Kamala Harris has now rammed this clown, Tim Walls, down our throats. That's what they've done. There's not an inch of difference between either of them. She's gone hardcore ideological, hardcore radical left. And while they pretend to care about working men and women in the middle class and equality and all the rest, that's not what they did. Two potentates, two oligarchs. She's handpicked by the ruling class of the Democrat Party They wanted her, they wanted him. And I say now, bring it on. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. We're living in unprecedented times. Every day we're seeing new breaking news. In fact, we're seeing challenges like we've never seen before. So in times like these, you need a solid foundation for your finances. And that's where diversification and gold come in. Gold has always been one of the ultimate safe havens in times of turmoil. When it comes to gold, I only trust one company, Advantage Gold. They're a five-star American company that I recommend to you. They're experts in precious metals and specialize in helping Americans protect their money with gold and silver. You can even use an existing retirement savings with zero fees. Call Advantage Gold today, 800-900-8000, and they'll send you a free gold investment kit to help you get started. Tell them Mark Levin sent you to see if you qualify for $1,000 in free silver. Help protect your wealth now with Advantage Gold. Call 800-900-8000 for your free gold investment kit, 800-900-8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. I, I love to hear this. She's all platitudinous, ladies and gentlemen. I have spared you from this. Most talk show hosts would not. They'd be pressured to plant. My God, your dinner would wind up on your shoes. Trust me. But you have a choice, she says, of democracy. And she le- democracy. She wasn't elected by anybody. Neither was he. You have a person here that was hand-selected by the Democrat Party ruling class in Washington, D.C., with the Democrat Party media in Washington, D.C. She just chose somebody to run with her who wasn't elected by anybody for anything at the national level. You literally have two candidates now, neither of whom were in a primary in the case of Kamala Harris for president and the case of Tim Waltz at all. And now they're lecturing us about democracy. I'll be right back. You know, we're living in strange times. All the news out there these days seems to be breaking news. The only thing that is certain is change. Regardless of the marketplace and in these times of instability, many small investors turn to gold. It's been a bedrock of wealth preservation for millennia. And when I think of gold, I think of Advantage Gold. They're not just another precious metals company. They're true partners in helping Americans find financial stability. You know, Advantage Gold's experts get the relationship between politics and economics. And they can navigate you through these crazy times using gold to help shield your hard-earned wealth from the shockwaves of political upheaval. 
So call our friends at Advantage Gold now at 800-900-8000 for a free gold investment kit. Help protect your wealth now with Advantage Gold. Again, 800-900-8000 for your free investment kit. And remember, tell them Mark Levin sent you to see if you qualify for up to $1,000 in free silver. That's 800-900-8000. Performance may vary. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. Mark Levin, the modern voice of the Founding Fathers. This is the Mark Levin Show. Dial in now at 877-381-3811. Under Governor Tim Walls of Minnesota, Minnesota became a sanctuary state. He pushed for and got legislation to give illegal immigrants taxpayer-funded health care, taxpayer-funded tuition, and driver's licenses. Tim Waltz of Minnesota has been a cheerleader, a pom-pom boy for the communist country of China. He has deep links to the communist country of China. Just like Bernie Sanders went on a honeymoon in Moscow, he went on a honeymoon in communist China. And he used to oversee a scholarship program funded by Beijing. What else? The list is so long. It is so long. He once proclaimed that he was a proud socialist. I'm sure that video is gone by now, no, Mr. Producer? And we're looking. Because the media won't do the job that the media are supposed to do. Here's the Trump campaign, 15 seconds worth, Mr. Producer. Cut four, go. Driver's licenses for illegals, transgender surgeries for kids. Let's stop right there. Transgender surgeries for kids. Six-year-olds. Minnesota has the most aggressively leftist, transgender surgery for kids law in the nation. Is this what you want, America? I notice they're not talking about that in Philadelphia. I notice the media are not talking about that. They're not talking about any of this. Go ahead. Riots in our streets. This was Kamala Harris's first decision as a presidential candidate. Kamala is dangerously liberal. We just can't trust her. Here's what he said, I mentioned the socialism thing, at a fundraising Zoom call last week. Cut five, go. But we can get out there, reach out, make the case. And for one thing, don't ever ever shy away from our progressive values. One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. Just do the damn work. Got it? He's basically telling you progressivism is socialism. Of course, he won't say it's Marxism. It's Marxism, but that's good enough. He doesn't shy from this guy's is he comes from the the Democrat Farm Labor Party in Minnesota, which is where all the whack jobs come from. On China, cut six, go. I lived in China, and uh, as I said, I've been there about 30 times, but uh, if someone tells you they're an expert on China, they're probably not telling you the truth, because it's a complex country. But it's critically important for us. I don't fall into the category that China necessarily needs to be an adversarial relationship. I totally disagree. Boy, Communist China's rooting for him, and they got what they wanted. Communist China's favorite son is now running, and soon will be, for Vice President of the United States. Can you imagine this? They had Biden, and now they're, they, they think they're going to have this Tim Walz. Only you can stop this. What about the Electoral College? America, we've talked about this before. Do we really want 11 blue states deciding for all and forever? Who our president and vice president is a very complicated debate. They came up with this brilliant idea. So all states have a say. Some states produce more oil than others. Some states produce more food than others. Some states have more people than others. And they said, look, in order to have a a fairly harmonious society, we have to have representation from all corners of this country. Tim Wall says no. No. Cut seven, go. The Electoral College seems very undemocratic to me. 
I mean, I think at first blush. But it also was an attempt to unify the less populated areas to try and give some voice. Um, now, those who would say this, the state of Wyoming has about 500 and some thousand people. They have less than in this congressional district. But the two senators from Wyoming have the same clout as the two senators from California. And the electoral college system and, and how we divide that representative proportion is a challenge. So I, it's I don't not a challenge. Let, let's slow down a second. Do you make this complaint about Delaware, Mr. Bedus? Did you ever hear him do that? Why do we have two senators from Delaware? Hmm? It's a tiny state with a small population. Why do we have two senators from Rhode Island? They're both Democrats. Tiny state with a small population. I mean, you can go through every state and do this, and this is exactly the point. They want to undo what was settled at the Constitutional Convention. We would never have a country if a guy like this were at the Constitutional Convention, ever. Ever. There would not be a United States of America. What we have here are big states in terms of population, in terms of votes, saying, look, we want to broom out the Electoral College. We want to take charge. We, the blue states, with the big cities, we want to control the suburbs. We want to control the experts. We want to control the rural areas. We don't care if you produce all the food we eat. We don't care if you produce all the energy we use. We don't care about it at all. Completely would unravel the country. It's, honestly, folks, this will be too complicated for the mediocreite types. But... These are the kind of arguments that were used before and into the Civil War. That we states have the power, we states have the power to impose our will, we states have the power to do whatever we want. No, we're the United States of America. There's federalism, but they're delineated powers. And so when you have somebody who's attacking the foundational principles of this country, like the Electoral College, Let's say two senators from a tiny populated state like Montana. Well, most of the rural areas in this country feed us. Most of the rural areas in this country provide us with our material necessities. We don't have coal mines in Philadelphia. We don't have steel mills in New York City. We don't have wheat growing, fields of wheat. In Chicago, the cities produce certain things, the rural areas produce certain things. And so this was the great compromise that the Democrats want to undo. And I tell you this all the time. Go ahead. Right now, um, I do think it's incredibly uplifting to me to watch citizens thinking about it, to have us talking about this again. All right, so let's stop. So he doesn't support the Electoral College. Doesn't support a secure border. Doesn't think China's a grave threat. That he signed a law that gives health care to illegal aliens. Can you imagine this nationally? Because it's happening. That gives free tuition to illegal aliens. That gives driver, vote, uh, driver IDs, licenses to illegal aliens. Which, of course, makes it much easier to vote in national elections. They know this. That's why they do it. And what about the Black Lives Matter riots? Ground Zero, Minnesota, Minneapolis. What about it? Did you like that? Do you like the way the governor handled that? Cut eight, go. And thank God. By the way, this is May 2020. Go ahead. And thank God a young person had a camera to video it. Because there's not a person here or listening today that wonders how many times that camera's not there. These are tough questions. These are things that have been brewing in this country for 400 years. We have people out there putting themselves on the line to try and put out fires and our firefighters that are under attack. Those are the things I'm asking you. Help me restore that order. We will do that under state leadership and state guidance. You will hear directly from them of once that decision was made around 1215 last night and that first mission was executed around 345 at the third precinct, we will see a difference. So I'm asking. Let's stop right here. He's rambling. He's, he's incoherent. 
Because the problem is for a Marxist socialist who attacks the cops, who attacks law and order, who says society is so thoroughly unjust, it's a white-dominated society, even though he's as white as they come, but that's all right. Then they talk about law and order and protecting the precincts and protecting the streets. This is not acceptable, you see. This is why he sounds like Professor Erwin Corey here. He's making no sense. None. Go ahead to talk about this. I also want to think about what happens when we don't have that. People who are concerned about that police presence of an overly armed camp in their neighborhoods that is not seen in communities where children... Okay, this is what I mean. This is the top executive in the state of Minnesota who failed the people in Minnesota. He failed the people in Minneapolis. Failed them. Completely. She's a failed vice president. He's a failed governor. They are extreme ideologues, no matter how much money they spend and how much the media try to change reality, because they must. Because they must. And here she is, Kamala Harris, in November 2021, asked about inflation. Are you concerned about inflation in America? Well, she has no proposal to deal with it, because... Her ideology, her socialism, his socialism, cause it. China's on its back economically right now, or it would have already invaded Taiwan. This centralized crap doesn't work. Cut three, go ahead. What else are you going to do to fix this problem with inflation? Thank you. Well, let's start with this. Uh, Prices have gone up. And families and individuals are dealing with the realities of, of the, that bread costs more, that gas costs more. And we have to understand what that means. That's about the cost of living going up. That's about having to stress and stretch. All right, thank you for nothing. Can you imagine? And the Democrat Party wants to install her in the Oval Office and install this other thug. These radical kooks who ramble all and on on. Who make promises to everyone for everything and are utterly incoherent. Now we have two of them. Tweedledee and Tweedledummy. Tweedledee and Tweedledummy. One in a pantsuit, one in a regular suit. On and on about abortion. Trump will ban abortion, he said. Trump just said he won't. What else does he have to do to explain that? The court didn't ban abortion. The court didn't rule abortion is unconstitutional. It could have. It did not. The court ruled it's up to the states. Now the blue states, they're having a blast. More abortions than you can possibly imagine. More abortions in America than before the Dobbs decision. And they're running on abortion. Well, that subject's not going to feed anybody in your family. That subject's not going to lower the price of gas. The subject is not going to make housing affordable, rent affordable, or any of those other things. This is how the Democrat Party plays. They claim to represent the little guy when they crush the little guy. They claim to represent freedom when they support autocracy and tyranny. And then they blame everybody else when their ideology fails as it must. As it must. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. We're living in unprecedented times. Every day we're seeing new breaking news. In fact, we're seeing challenges like we've never seen before. So in times like these, you need a solid foundation for your finances. And that's where diversification and gold come in. Gold has always been one of the ultimate safe havens in times of turmoil. When it comes to gold... I only trust one company, Advantage Gold. They're a five-star American company that I recommend to you. They're experts in precious metals and specialize in helping Americans protect their money with gold and silver. You can even use an existing retirement savings with zero fees. Call Advantage Gold today, 800-900-8000, and they'll send you a free gold investment kit to help you get started. Tell them Mark Levin sent you to see if you qualify for $1,000 in free silver. Help protect your wealth now with Advantage Gold. Call 800-900-8000 for your free gold investment kit, 
800-900-8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. Most of you went to high school, right? You had these student government races. Remember those, Mr. Producer? And these kind of speeches you would give as a prebubescent. And with all the weird cheering and all the weird statements. That's what we just heard. These are two morons who give speeches like high school students, or even worse, two prebubescent morons. Van Jones had a point today. Rarely does, but he did today on CNN. Cut 12, go. Here's the challenge you've got in this party. Uh, and you know, people don't want to talk about it, we got to talk about it. On the one hand, you have a, a lot of young people who are concerned about Gaza. You have a lot of Muslims and Arabs and others. They have not felt seen by the Biden administration. Uh, you start, start hearing that genocide joke, that was building, that was building. And so those folks needed to have a, a candidate that they could feel comfortable with. This helps them in that regard. But you also have anti-Semitism that has gotten marbled into this party. You can be you know, for uh, the Palestinians without being an anti-Jewish bigot, but there are some anti-Jewish bigots out there. And there's some disquiet now, and there has to be. How much of what just happened is caving into some of these darker parts in the party? So that's going to have to get worked out. It's going to have to yeah. get talked through. You won't hear that in the rest of the media. George Stephanopoulos is really uh, out of the closet now. He is a hateful, vicious little bastard. And here he is on ABC News today. Cut 11, go. Uh, Wallace appears to fit the uh, all-American definition of a man from middle, middle America. High school te- teacher, football coach, member of the Army National Guard, before becoming a member of Congress and now governor. Exactly. He really has that perfect backstory. He also has those rural roots. And he's really emerged as the dark horse in this deep stakes race. This is ABC. ABC is the Clinton administration with Stephanopoulos. It's just sickening. It's, it's, it's just beyond belief. But we've got more. Never fear, Mark is here. That's right. Never fear, Mark is here. So you heard what Stephanopoulos said about Walls. He doesn't mention J.D. Vance. Came from a dirt poor family. Joined the Marines. Went to Yale Law School, became a successful entrepreneur. They never talk about J.D. Vance as the definition of an all-American man, do they? An all-American man from middle America. No, they don't. And yet look at the poison, the lies, the propaganda that come out of George Stephanopoulos' big fat mouth. Already positioning one of the most crazy-ass left-wing politicians in America, the governor of Minnesota, teaming up with a like person, Vice President of the United States, like, L-I-K-E, who's just as, just as pathetic as the so-called running mate that she chose. I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Please welcome President Ronald Reagan, who has a few questions for you. All of you will go to the polls. You stand there in the polling place and make a decision. I think when you make that decision, it might be well if you would ask yourself, are you better off than you were four years ago? Is it easier for you to go and buy things in the stores than it was four years ago? Is there more or less unemployment in the country than there was four years ago? Is America as respected throughout the world as it was? Do you feel that our security is as safe, that we're as strong as we were four years ago? 
If you don't think that this course that we've been on for the last four years is what you would like to see us follow for the next four, then I could suggest another choice that you have. President Trump, he'll make America great again. It's a great ad to see it is to really appreciate it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this was in the uh, New York Post about Josh Shapiro. It hasn't been discussed on any major news network, not one. You heard George Stephanopoulos, who is a propagandist, a demagogue, and a psychopath, in my view, a liar. My opinion. You saw the way he treated Byron Donald. You see the way he reports on J.D. Vance, and then he tells you that this guy, Tim Walls, He's the all-American, the all-American candidate. George Stephanopoulos has destroyed ABC News. But ABC News doesn't care. But he's destroyed it. Josh Shapiro. I want you to listen to this. A Richard Polina. The parents of a Philadelphia teacher found dead in 2011 with 20 stab wounds and an apparent suicide. All right, let's stop. Mr. Peter, can you imagine a suicide where you stab yourself 20 times? I, I, I just don't think so. Have won the right to challenge the ruling for the chance of changing it to a homicide, according to a report. The family of Ellen Greenberg had fought for more than a decade to overturn the city's ruling of the death of the teacher whose body was found riddled with stab wounds, ready? Including 10 to the back of the head and neck. In her Philadelphia apartment during a blizzard on January 26, 2011. But last week, Greenberg's parents, Joshua and Sandy, finally broke ground where the Pennsylvania Supreme Court granted their appeal to hear the case, according to WHP-TV. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court only takes cases which it decides are significant enough from a social standpoint to consider, said the Greenberg's family attorney, Joe Pedraza. While investigating Ellen Greenberg's death in 2011, police initially suspected the 27-year-old teacher had committed suicide, noting the lack of forced entry, defensive wounds, or DNA on her body that wasn't hers. Medical examiner Marlon Osborne determined the first grade teacher's death to be a homicide, but reversed course and amended the ruling to suicide more than a month later. Got that? Reversed course more than a month later. Ruled it a homicide. Greenberg's family hired a team of experts in the aftermath of her death who pointed out that a knife in her apartment was overturned, possibly suggesting she'd been involved in a struggle and a gash on the back of her head may have rendered her unconscious and unable to defend herself. Podraza also previously claimed that the evidence showed that at least two of the 20 stab wounds were inflicted after Greenberg's heart had already stopped beating. So apparently she stabbed herself twice when she was dead. So what the hell's going on here? So they sued the medical examiner's office and Osborne in 2019, but an appellate court panel upheld the ruling for her death last September. Ellen stabbing herself 20 times before dying is bull blank, Joshua Greenberg, the young teacher's father, told the Daily Mail on Sunday. She died from a very vicious, very painful knife attack. Despite last year's ruling, judges acknowledged the deeply flawed investigation of Greenberg by the Philadelphia police, the DA, and the medical examiner's office. The state Supreme Court will address the crucial issue of whether the executors and administrators of an estate should have the legal standing to contest a finding on a death certificate. The finding can significantly impact an individual's ability to seek victim's compensation, receive restitution from a wrongful death suit, or pursue a criminal complaint. Pedraza said the decision will allow the courts to examine if coroners and medical examiners had absolute power they can be challenged when the evidence shows they are not only mistaken but grossly mistaken. (coughs) Excuse me. 
For every citizen in this commonwealth, this case could potentially have a bearing in their lives, and it goes on. Aside from the new developments with the Supreme Court's involvement, the investigation has been transferred to Chester County DA's office due to conflicts in Philadelphia with the state attorney general. The state attorney general? Hmm. The family is pursuing a separate civil lawsuit alleging a cover-up over her death. What they're covering up, I don't know. And they're covering up police inadequacy and mistakes, and they're covering up some other personality or person, said Joshua Greenberg. I don't know, but it's a cover-up. There's a mistake somewhere here, a big blanking mistake. Pretty interesting, though, Mr. Producer. So where was the Attorney General's office? That's what everybody's asking. Where was the Attorney General's office? The Attorney General at the time being the now governor. People want to know. Dr. Cyril Wecht, a famed forensic pathologist who conducted an independent review of the autopsy, found the evidence strongly suspicious of homicide. Now, he died in May, but he previously told Fox News Digital that after looking at the forensic evidence, he believed the idea that Greenberg could have committed suicide was highly, highly unlikely. This is such a bogus case, he said. It's a cluster blank. Another highly respected forensic pathologist, Dr. Henry Lee, also reviewed the case. He found that the angle of the wounds on the back of Greenberg's head would have been difficult to inflict herself and that her injuries were consistent with a homicide scene. Dr. Osborne, the medical examiner, has since moved to Florida, where he works in the Palm Beach County Medical Examiner's Office. He's not responded to requests on the Greenberg case, reports Fox News. So people want to know. It's obviously a cover-up. People want to know who was involved. They also want to know what role the Attorney General's Office played. I think that's a fair question, don't you? We're going to have Michelle Bachman on the program in Hour 3. She's well aware of Tim Waltz. They were Congress people together. She being from Minnesota as well. The cover-up's already been... You know, the media are now in the midst of creating two fictions. One involving Kamala Harris, one involving this guy Tim Waltz. They have two radical Marxist Islamist socialists. And they're completely rewriting their history. They're completely covering for them. Because they hate you and me and Trump so much. And that's the truth. And she didn't pick Shapiro because he's Jewish. I don't want to hear about her husband. Her, hu- her husband's about marriage and love and all the rest of it. She made a political calculation. Not when she married her husband. She made a political calculation in this choice, right? Everybody knows that. And she calculated that, as Van Jones said, they have a problem in the Democrat Party. This problem doesn't exist in the Republican Party. It simply does not. The Republican Party, nobody boycotted Netanyahu's speech. Nobody is opposed to supporting Israel. The Democrat Party is broken up over the whole thing. But there's a fascinating story here. The Israelis believe that the Iranians, either Hezbollah first, they think, are going to attack within the next 24 to 48 hours. Now, can you imagine living in a civilized country, in a town or a city in in Israel, sitting and waiting to get attacked by barbarians. Can you imagine that? That is the regimes, barbarian regimes, monsters. But I want to tell you a little story. It's in the Jewish Chronicle. How Israel assassinated Ishmael Haniyeh in Tehran, one of the Islamo-Nazi Hamas mass murders by Elon Perry, Elon Perry, rather. As has been universally assumed, although not confirmed by the Israeli government, Israel was indeed responsible for the killing of Hamas leader Ishmael Hanaya in Tehran last week. But the JC, the Jewish Chronicle, can reveal that the explosive device placed under his bed 
was planted by two Iranians recruited by the Mossad from the Ansar al-Mahdi security unit of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, the very people who are supposed to secure the building and its guests. The Iranians themselves realized this after the assassination when the guards were seen on security camera footage on the day of the assassination moving stealthily into the hallway towards the room Rahania planned to stay, opening the door with a key and entering the room. Three minutes later, the guards who were offered a six-figure sum each, as well as immediate relocation to a northern European country, were captured on camera, calmly leaving the room, going down the stairs toward the main entrance of the building, leaving and then getting into a black car. The guard at the parking lot checkpoint recognized them, opened the gate without asking any questions. An hour later, they were smuggled out of Iran by the Mossad. This is a movie, isn't it, Mr. Producer? Reports have suggested the device was placed in his room weeks or months before the explosion. This is wrong. Security cameras show it was placed on the day of the explosion at 4.23 p.m., some nine hours before it was activated when Hania entered his room. The explosion, which was set off remotely by a robot, took place after midnight at exactly 1.37 a.m. local time. To prevent possible detection... The Mossad planted a flat brick explosive three inches wide by six inches long that was fastened to the bottom of the bed. To minimize harming innocent civilians, they used a bomb known for its precision, which targeted only Hanya's room. And as a result, only one specific area of the building was damaged. Hania's assassination, which was de- uh, decided on after April, uh, October 7th, rather, necessitated a complicated set of arrangements from a network of Mossad spies dispersed throughout Tehran, including local Iranian collaborators who've been active in the Iran long before the Gaza War. Over the past 20 years, Israel has been gathering intel about Iran's efforts to develop nuclear weapons. And this intelligence, in addition to the recruitment of two IRGC members, enabled the success of the operation. How much you want to bet that if Iran attacks, they've got plans underway to unleash these Iranian patriots against the Islamo-Nazi leadership there. Following the decision to carry out Hania's assassination, the Mossad began searching for a suitable opportunity to strike. It emerged when he was invited to Tehran for the new Iranian president's inauguration. I want to continue this after the break. You don't want to miss the end of this. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. I'm going to let you in on a little wireless trick that can cut your cell phone bill in half every single month. Other major carriers want you to believe you need unlimited data so they can overcharge you. Here's the fact. Most of you are buying way more data than you'll ever need and you'll ever use. Pure Talk, my cell phone company, only charges you for data you actually want. Listen to this. For $25 a month, you can get unlimited talk, text, and 5 gigs of data plus mobile hotspot. Do you know what you can do with 5 gigs? of data you can browse the internet for 135 hours stream 1000 songs or watch 10 hours of video folks stop overpaying for wireless get 5g coverage with pure talk go to puretalk.com slash levin that's puretalk.com slash l-e-v-i-n switching is painless it's easy there's no contract no activation fee you can even keep your phone and your number Again, that's puretalk.com slash Levin, puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month on top of all the other savings when you sign up with Pure Talk. Let's get on with this. Very important. Hey, the Israelis took out one of the uh, chief Hamas Islamo-Nazis. The Mossad, with the assistance of Intelligent Unit 8200, that is the IDF unit responsible for clandestine operations, intercepted phone calls between the organizers of the inauguration and the invited guests. When Hanaya, the head Hamas Islamo-Nazi, confirmed his arrival, the Mossad began executing the plan, eliminate Hania in the guest house where he usually stayed during his visits to Tehran. Mossad then sent its own agents to visit the air regularly to supply the operational logistics, map every street and alleyway, identify potential escape routes, and check the building's security measures. But the agents encountered difficulties when arriving in the area. The guest house was perched on a hill and surrounded by a forest of towering trees, which made it very difficult to observe the building clearly. 
But, is, but Israeli improvisation and creativity then kicked in. Five agents dressed themselves in green clothing and simply climbed the trees closest to the building. While camouflaged by the green color of the trees, now the view was clear for them. Their role was to report as soon as Hania arrived at the building, having memorized his car's color and license plate number. In the absence of a source inside the building who could inform them when Hania had entered his room, another Mossad squad, also dressed in green, climbed into the branches of the trees, watched the building from an angle where the window of Hania's room was facing them. Their role was to notify the bomb operator as soon as the light went out in Hania's room. At 1.20 in the morning, all the invited guests arrived at the guest house. Hania entered his room after exchanging goodbye hugs and handshakes, while his bodyguard stood outside his door to keep him safe. About 10 minutes later, the light was switched off, and a pastoral silence fell over the guest house area. At that moment, the bomb operator detonated an explosion that shook the entire structure. Hania was killed immediately. His bodyguard was critically injured and subsequently died after heavy bleeding. When his identity was checked by the Mossad before the operation, they realized that the bodyguard was also a wanted terrorist. A senior member of Hamas's military wing and one of the group of terrorists who'd infiltrated Israel through a tunnel in 2014 and murdered five IDF soldiers. Following the assassination, Iranian security authorities raided the guest house compound, arresting 28 senior military officials and headquarters personnel who were present. All their electronic gadgets were confiscated to search their communications. The Iranian agents scanned the entire facility inch by inch and analyzed the security cameras frame by frame. When they discovered that members of the IRGC were involved, they were not surprisingly enraged. The next day, when they threatened to inflict serious punishment on Israel, this was as much to do with the humiliation as because of the death of a senior Hamas official they were hosting. The Mossad had multiple opportunities to eliminate Hania in Qatar, but Israel refrained from doing so because Qatar served as a vital negotiator between Hamas and Israel over the hostage crisis. Carrying out an assassination on Qatari soil might embarrass Qatar and jeopardize any future peace accord because Israel and Qatar that had under discussion before the Gaza war. Now the writer of this piece, Elon Perry, is a former commando soldier of the elite Golani Brigade of the Israeli Defense Forces, which he served in for 28 years and so forth. Now lives in London. The Long Arm of the Mossad, as they call it. That's a movie, isn't it, Mr. Medusa? I think it would be very interesting. Uh, but nonetheless, that also sent a signal to the head Islamo Nazi in Iran. And so they've been humiliated. And now they want to attack. I'm one of those that thinks that would be a severe miscalculation of the capacity of the Israeli government, the Israeli military, and, and Israeli intelligence. They're way far outnumbered. They are. It's a tiny country with a tiny population. But they're a thousand times smarter than their enemy. I'll be right back. I'm going to let you in on a little wireless trick that can cut your cell phone bill in half every single month. Other major carriers want you to believe you need unlimited data so they can overcharge you. Here's the fact. Most of you are buying way more data than you'll ever need and you'll ever use. Pure Talk, my cell phone company, only charges you for data you actually want. Listen to this. For $25 a month, you can get unlimited talk, text, and 5 gigs of data plus mobile hotspot. Do you know what you can do with 5 gigs? of data you can browse the internet for 135 hours stream 1000 songs or watch 10 hours of video folks stop overpaying for wireless get 5g coverage with pure talk go to puretalk.com slash levin that's puretalk.com slash l-e-v-i-n switching is painless it's easy there's no contract no activation fee you can even keep your phone and your number Again, that's puretalk.com slash Levin, puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month on top of all the other savings when you sign up with Pure Talk. The new American Revolution starts here. The Mark Levin Show. Call in at 877-381-3811. Well, I ask you, America, is George Stephanopoulos right that Tim Waltz is the definition of middle America 
I mean, coming from George Stephanopoulos, that is hilarious. But nonetheless, that's what he declared. The man is radical and extreme. He's the most radical far-left vice presidential nominee in U.S. history. And Kamala Harris is the most radical far-left presidential nominee in U.S. history. Even the manner in which she was given the so-called nomination. Walls will be a rubber stamp for her. And her agenda includes open borders and a weak economy. Harris caved to the radical left of her party, the Hamas wing of her party. That's what she did. She had the whole world in front of her. She could have picked anybody she wanted. Waltz believes, as I played the audio from just a week or two ago, that one person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. That he's more happy, more than happy, to be labeled a big government liberal, quote-unquote. He's not only weak on the border security, he supports sanctuary cities and sanctuary states. Walls believes that American taxpayers, your hard-earned dollars, should pay for illegal immigrants, their health care, and their college tuition. That's what he did in the state of Minnesota. He believes and has repeatedly called for universal health care. This is Soviet-style, government-run, centralized health care. But it's not health care at all, ladies and gentlemen, because most people don't get quality health care under such a system. But he's demanding it, just like Kamala Harris did. So let's stop here for a moment. I don't really believe, she says, in getting rid of private health care, and yet she picked somebody who does, and she said so in the past. She picked somebody who supported every one of her Marxist, Islamist, radical, anti-American policies that she claims to be running away from. George Stephanopoulos says this is the quality of the Midwest. This is what it is, as he speaks from his New York City studio. Or is it Washington, D.C.? So they have a very diverse ticket here, a candidate who hails from San Francisco and a candidate who hails from Minnesota. Walsh wants to raise taxes on Americans, proposing to do so multiple times as governor. He believes in abortion on demand up until the moment of birth. Waltz wants to weaken election safeguards. He criticizes voter ID proposals as, quote, solutions looking for a problem. Guy's a complete thug. He's a climate change radical who wants to phase out fossil fuels. He forced Minnesota to adopt stricter emission standards for cars, trucks, and SUVs aligning it with California despite objections from auto dealers. So this is his mindset. He picks up every left-wing idea, no matter how kooky, no matter how crazy, no matter how radical, no matter how it affects the people. The quality of education in Minnesota since he's been governor has already dropped. He takes his marching orders from the teachers' union bosses like Randy Weingart. And he was a member of the teachers' union himself. He has his own deplorables moment and attacked rural Minnesotans as mostly rocks and cows. Rural Minnesota as mostly rocks and cows. So George Stephanopoulos agrees with that. He embraces criminals. He's weak on crime. He hesitated to commit the Minnesota National Guard for three days while the Twin Cities burned during the riots that followed Floyd's death on May 2020. You might recall all this. Six months later, he says it's probably a mistake. Is this what you want for America, these two people, ladies and gentlemen? If you don't, you better get busy. You better become activists in your own lives, your own roles, your own positions. Donate if you can. Volunteer some time if you can, even on the phone. At a minimum, make sure you vote early where there's early voting. And make sure like-minded friends and colleagues and co-workers and family members do exactly the same thing. You've got to be the Paul Revere's. You've got to be the Thomas Paine's. You can't just rely on a party or a candidate. You've got to take this seriously and embrace it. It's our responsibility. We're up against a party that literally wants to destroy this country and replace it. A party that controls the media. A a party that controls academia. This is it. You're the line. 
You're the line of defense to this republic. I mean, they ought to have their own party called the abortion party, because in part, that's all they ever want to talk about. Very, very important. But it could be worse. What do you mean, Mark? She could have actually picked somebody who is a moderate. I don't mean Shapiro by that. She could have found a Democrat moderate, which would have been much more difficult for us to defeat. Why? Because she's trying to reinvent herself, as are the media trying to reinvent her, as somebody who's moderate, somebody who can appeal to the suburbanites, somebody who can appeal to the, uh, to the liberal Republicans and some independents. But she picked somebody, she picked a clone putting the racial identity and the sexual identity all aside, she picked an ideological clone. That's what she did. We have some really lousy governors in this country. Do you know his iron fist during the pandemic was the most forceful, biggest, most aggressive iron fist of any governor in the United States? More than the clown in New Jersey, more than the clown in California, more than the clown in Illinois. It's the clown in Minnesota. He couldn't shut down things fast enough. He couldn't put out dictatorial orders fast enough. He was having a grand old time. And then they talk about democracy. I just hope, if there's a debate between Trump and Harris, that he says, democracy. Who the hell do you think you are lecturing me or anybody in this country about democracy? You stand here on this stage as the most undemocratically appointed, special interest, elitist, ruling class candidate we've ever had in this country. And you talk about democracy? You talk about democracy when you want an all-powerful central bureaucracy issuing orders, telling people how to live, where to live? Democracy? You say you support democracy? When you open the borders wide in violation of federal immigration law, so as many illegal aliens as possible come into this country, no matter the danger to any individual, no matter the terrorism, no matter the fentanyl, because you hope one day that they will become Democrat voters and you have chain migration and their children. Democracy, you say you stand for? You demean the Constitution, you demean the men who drafted the Constitution, you demean the men who ratified the Constitution, you you demean the Constitution itself. You stand for democracy? No, I don't think so. In about a half hour, we will have former Representative Michelle Bachman, now she's dean at a college, who had to work with this guy, who knows all about this guy. They both come out of Minnesota. And look, ladies and gentlemen, you got a guy that comes out of Minnesota. You got a woman who comes out of San Francisco. Siri, seriously, this is middle America. What exactly do any of you have in common with the ideology of these people? Do you really think a legal alien should have free health care? Do you see the costs of health care? Have you gone to a hospital lately? Have you gone to a doctor lately? Do you see the costs? We already are paying for people who are here who don't pay their way, who are on the dole. You're going to open the door? To 10 million, 15 million, if they have their way, if they take the House and the Senate and the President, you're going to have 50 million illegal aliens in this country. The country will be completely changed. And let me tell you something else. I'm the only person that has the guts to say it, and yet we all see it and hear it. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Look at Europe. Look at the United States. Look at Canada. That's right. The second Muslim crusade is underway. It's been underway. And you know what's interesting? I have friends of mine who are Muslim who can interpret different writings and readings for me. There was one, I can't remember the name, one particularly radical Imam, who talked about uh, uh, conquering the world through immigration. 
Now, that only makes sense. Because when you have weak countries in Europe and you have weak leadership in the United States and Canada, you can affect a nation, you can affect its culture, you can affect its psychology, you can affect it in a thousand different ways without a single terrorist act. You just exploit their weakness. Or you exploit, you exploit their self-hate for their own country and culture. That's exactly what's taking place. That's why many people are scratching their heads. Like, oh my God, what the hell's going on in this country? Burning the American flag, replacing it with the Palestinian flag. What the hell went on in these Ivy League schools? What's going on in Congress with the Hamas wing? What's going on in our media? Where there are representatives of Hamas and others, effectively. Look at Europe. The head rabbi in Europe said last week, Jews have 10 years left to live in France, then they need to leave. They have to get out. Look at London. London. You see, Britain, most of Europe, Sweden, France, the United States, a Democrat party that now rap- represents Islamists, not just Muslims, Islamists. I endorsed a Muslim for Congress, Zudi Jasser. I have no problem with that. If they're patriots who support the country, I don't really care what their religion is. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. And Zudi Jasser would tell you that too. But because the Democrat Party is now the embodiment for all these movements, all these radical anti-American movements, and the media are part of the Democrat Party, People like me are attacked when we tell the truth. The second Muslim crusade is conquering Europe, country by country. The European Union. Why do you think there's this this incredible hate coming out of Europe for the state of Israel? Incredible hate in our universities, in our media, in surrogates in our media, like Mediaite, or the Drudge Report. Our media matters, and them. Why do you think they have this contempt? Why do you think they hate the president that was the best friend Israel ever had, and they covered for Biden, and they'll cover for Harris, and they'll cover for for Walt? Why do you think? Because it's true. And so we're supposed to give free health care to anybody who just steps into the country. Free tuition to go to college. Anyone who just steps into the country. Friend or foe, it doesn't matter. It was the great Milton Friedman who said, you cannot have open borders with a welfare state. It'll destroy your country. And he supported open borders without the welfare state, but he realized that wasn't what was taking place. You have the Wall Street Journal editorial page with Paul Gigo and others who argued for decades for open borders. They were wrong. In fact, they were stupid. They never written in, a, in a, an editorial apologizing for it either. National Review has always been solid when it comes to sovereignty and securing the border. As a matter of fact, as has your host, when other hosts in talk radio years ago, when George W. Bush had his gang of eight was pushing it, I said no, absolutely not, and we fought it and we won. But look what's going on now. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. I'm going to let you in on a little wireless trick that can cut your cell phone bill in half every single month. Other major carriers want you to believe you need unlimited data so they can overcharge you. Here's the fact. Most of you are buying way more data than you'll ever need and you'll ever use. Pure Talk, my cell phone company, only charges you for data you actually want. Listen to this. For $25 a month, you can get unlimited talk, text, and 5 gigs of data plus mobile hotspot. Do you know what you can do with 5 gigs? of data 
You can browse the internet for 135 hours, stream 1,000 songs, or watch 10 hours of video. Folks, stop overpaying for wireless. Get 5G coverage with Pure Talk. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin. That's puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N. Switching is painless. It's easy. There's no contract, no activation fee. You can even keep your phone and your number. Again, that's puretalk.com slash Levin, puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month on top of all the other savings when you sign up with Pure Talk. Democrat Party and the media broomed out Biden, who won the primary, disenfranchised 14 and a half million Democrat voters. They installed Kamala Harris without a fight, without a discussion, without a convention. Then they decide not to choose Josh Shapiro because of the rampant anti-Semitism that has that has gone loose within the Democrat Party. Rampant. And you have these dumb liberals, dumb liberals, who sit there and say, no, it's not a Jew. Oh, it's Jewish, believe me. And then they pick this guy from Minnesota, German guy, but that's okay by me, I don't care, who says every bit radical, Marxist Islamist, as Kamala Harris. And they want you to swallow the whole thing. They just figure by waving abortion, abortion, abortion in front of everybody's face that that'll be enough. Billions in free in-kind contributions by the likes of George Stephanopoulos. He fits the all-American definition. Oh, you stupid little dwarf. You really are a moron. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. Well, America... It's a big day, as far as I'm concerned. Very big day. It's my wife's birthday. It's Julie's birthday. And uh, she is fantastic. She is terrific. And very strong. What do I mean by that? Well... I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, Mr. Reduce here. People, when they come up to us, they always say to my wife, take care of him. We want him to be well. We want him to stay well. And then we appreciate it. But she always looks at me and smiles when they say that. Because she does that. But she does that even when she's suffering from certain physical ailments. She's very strong, and she fights her way through it, never complains about it, and, um, and it's her birthday. And I want the nation to know. That's one of the little perks I have here, you know. And I'm extraordinarily lucky. I truly am. So I can't say it enough. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Always worried about her husband, always taking care of her husband. Don't get me wrong, and this is a very strong professional woman. She's actually one of the smartest lawyers I know. And I rarely do anything of any consequence without seeking her consultation. It's the truth. I never sign a damn thing without her reading. You know, it's one thing to be a constitutional lawyer, Mr. B. It's quite another to be a real lawyer. Do you know what I mean? A nuts and bolts lawyer. I used to do that nuts and bolts lawyer stuff, and I was damn good at it. But I didn't like it. She loves it. Anyway, there's that. Just wanted to bring that up. You know what this election's about? It's about a lot of things. But among other things, it's about whether we, the people, 
are going to allow the George Stephanopoulos of the world, are going to allow the Randy Weingartens of the world, are going to allow the Bernie Sanders of the world, Nancy Pelosi, whether we're going to allow the people who exploit us, undermine us, control us, regulate us, tax us, whether we're going to allow them to get that final ounce of power where we cannot get our freedom back. This whole election on the Democrat side is and has been a complete farce from day one. Joe Biden ran the first time he had dementia. The second time they changed the primary process. They changed the primary process to ensure that Biden couldn't lose. Then they covered up his dementia. We all saw it, and then they attacked us when we said what we saw and what we knew. The drumbeat of propaganda from George Stephanopoulos and his ilk was unrelenting. Then the debate happened, where he got his ass whipped by Donald Trump, but he exposed himself to the entire nation, including the so-called silent majority that doesn't really focus in on what's taking place, but they focused on that debate, and they couldn't believe their eyes, and the media knew it. So immediately they took steps, along with the Democrat Party ruling class elitists, to change the outcome of the primary election of the Democrat Party, to disenfranchise almost 15 million voters in every state and territory. And they did it. Right in front of our eyes. Then they decided, it's got to be Kamala Harris. We cannot have a battle for the nomination. Then that'll show the, the young, ugly underbelly of the Democrat Party, the different factions, the Hamas wing, the Marxist wing. And they said, no, we can't do that. She's a lightweight, but that's what we've got. But she has a few things going for her. We will use the race card. We will use the sex card. She will be the abortion candidate. But we cannot have any challenges, none. We've already destroyed Robert Kennedy and pushed him out of the party. We already already destroyed this congressman. I think he was from Minnesota. A real moderate, a Democrat, a businessman. We already kicked his ass out. We cannot have any challenges. So the media and the Democrats working together. First they said, we remember this from CBS News. Margaret Brennan, remember this, Mr. Producer? You can't have her challenged by a white person. Didn't she say that? Something akin to it, I can bring it back. Look what that would do to the party. That's true. So that's not going to happen. And then immediately, Obama, Pelosi, Jeffries, Schumer, the other reprobates, they make it clear. Let's talk about mini primaries, which of course is bizarre. No, 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 we got to get it to her. Then even before there's a convention, an open convention where anybody can challenge from the floor, what do they do? She is the selected nominee for president Virtually. With big fat slobs sitting in their underwear in the basement of their mother all over the country. We call them Democrat delegates voting for Kamala Harris. They didn't even have the power to do that. They did under the rules, but not really because, wait a minute, they're only there because of Joe Biden they voted for. For president. Didn't matter. The system was completely turned inside out, upside down. It was violated. Rules for the Democrats are made to be violated, even when it's their own rules. Remember, the ends justify the means. That's what the communists believe. So she gets the nomination, virtually, last weekend. Nobody even knows what the hell's going on. Then she decides she's going to pick a running mate. She's illegitimate, so the running mate, of course, is illegitimate. And they throw out names they don't even mean to consider just to create, you know, a fog, a static out there. 
And I believe she decided, let's do Shapiro. Let's, you know, I know he's a Jew and all the rest, but we got to try and get Pennsylvania. But then the Hamas wing stood up and the Marxist wing stood up. The Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, the Talib, Omar, AOC. stood. No, 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 no. You want to win Michigan and, Bor- and, and dear Bornistan? You can't have this. <clears throat> and by the way, this tough guy, Josh Shapiro. Now he's for a two-state solution. He sold out. As a Jew, he sold out. He figured, look, if I sell out, she'll pick me. And besides, what's more important than my power? What's more important than my ego? What's more important than me being the first Jewish vice president? Sells out Netanyahu. There's Israel fighting for its very survival. And here's the Jewish governor. But it wasn't good enough. Why? It still wasn't good enough for the Hamas wing. Why? Because he's Jewish. Jewish by blood and skin. Jewish by, we can't have him. My God, we can't have him. Bernie Sanders, yes, because he's denounced who he is, as have others. So Bernie Sanders, one of us, you know, he's a Marxist Islamist. He's okay. Shapiro actually supported Israel up to this point. So this guy sells out. He prostrates himself. He's not picked. Gives this speech today where he's screaming at the top of his lungs. And even some of our friends, wow, no, that guy's unbelievable. No, he was running for 2028. There's no question about it. But he's not unbelievable. He's typical. But now you have the two, two of the most radical, incompetent, vile politicians in the United States of America running as a team on a ticket. So George Stephanopoulos cuts in immediately, right, Mr. Producer? And just a reminder, here's what he says. Cut 11, go. Uh, Waltz appears to fit the uh, all-American definition of a man from middle, middle America. High school teach, teacher, football coach, member of the Army National Guard, before becoming a member of Congress, and now governor. That's pretty sick. Actually, that's J.D. Vance. An all-American definition of a man from medical, middle America. But they try to destroy J.D. Vance, you see. Because George Stephanopoulos is a Bill Clinton hitman. When Bill Clinton was busy raping and molesting women, he set up a war room. And who headed the war room? George Stephanopoulos. This little punk smeared and character assassinated the women, the victims of Bill Clinton. And he's never suffered the consequences, this little punk. The Me Too movement somehow passed over him. He's an obnoxious little pig. That's what he is. That's right, I said it. I'll be right back. Mark Levin. Well, it's been a while, but we're here with our dear friend Michelle Bachman, as you know, was a Congress person from Minnesota. She's Dean of the Robertson School of Government at Regent University in Virginia Beach. That's excellent. Michelle Bachman, welcome. Now, uh, this guy, this Tim Walls, (laughs) he's trying to portray himself as some kind of middle America moderate. I mean, isn't this sick? It's absolutely sick, Mark. Actually, Tim Walls and I entered Congress together the same year in 2006. Prior to that, he'd been a high school teacher for about 20 years, and then he went to Congress. And he was a radical from the very beginning in the Progressive Caucus. I was so shocked because he came across as this back-slapping, aw shucks kind of a good old boy. But when he went on the floor of Congress, he screamed and shouted and ripped apart conservative policies and bandied about the progressive agenda. I was shocked. I didn't know that he was that progressive. But he proved that all through his 12 years in Congress. And then as governor, it was like the roof came off. Every fantasy of the left he put into place, and he, he had his entire agenda that he put in in 2023, and he was so successful that Barack Obama, Biden, and Harris called Walls to the White House 
in order to show him off to all the Democrats across the country. This is what all you guys want to do. You want to put in this radical agenda just like Walsh did. And Walsh was able to put it in because he had a Democrat House, Democrat Senate. They went for broke, and it's the most radical agenda I've ever seen. I sent it to you, Mark. I wrote a summary of it. I have it available. And um, I'll tell you, it. no one could believe what he did. We're a solid state. He completely upended the state, and he's put us in the poorhouse, and he's destroyed people's lives. And he's caused uh, so many people to leave this state. In fact, what he did was so bad in this 2023 election or session that 30,000 people in this state took $2 billion in assets out and moved and left. And we had, the year before that, 19,000 leave. That doesn't sound like a lot of people. It's a ton of people for Minnesota. And it's the people that own something who are leaving. What we're attracting to Minnesota are impoverished people. He can't wait to bring more illegal aliens into this state. And that's why, Mark, Wall gave free driver's license to 80,000 illegal aliens. Then they're put on the voter rolls in Minnesota. Mm. Then he gave them all free school breakfast, free school lunch, free housing, free SNAP food programs. And then he gave them free college. So if you come to Minnesota and you're an illegal alien, you get free college. Gives them free health care, too, recently, I read. Isn't that correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He gives them well, how the hell can a state pay for, for people who just come into the state, who have no roots in the state, who come there for the welfare state, and all the taxpayers, the hardworking citizens of Minnesota, I mean, why do they vote for the guy? I don't understand this. Is it because they're so committed to the Democrat Party like a religion that they can't help themselves? Well, Walls did this in his second term, so there is no other election for him. And he got, he got the trifecta, he got the House, he got the Senate, and he decided he was going to go for broke, and that's exactly what he did. He was sitting on a surplus mark of $17 billion. He blew the wad. He blew up the spending in one year, listen to this, 40%. So the state budget now spends 40% more than it ever did, and it condemns the tax of Minnesota to an increase in our taxes of eight to ten billion dollars. So the wealthy people are leaving this state. The, all of the impoverished people are coming in, and he's giving away free school breakfast to every kid in Minnesota, free school lunch to every kid in Minnesota, and free college to anyone in Minnesota who's making less than eighty thousand dollars a year. That's easy to do for the period of time you're in college. And so the most expensive programs that there are, he's made them free to other people, but very expensive to the people who live here in Minnesota. But people probably know him from the George Floyd riots. And during the George Floyd riots, literally as governor, he told the National Guard to stand down. He watched the third precinct in Minnesota, the police precinct, burn to the ground. That lit the match to riots in cities all across the United States. Just so people know, this means five miles of businesses, five miles, get in your car and drive five miles, five miles of businesses in Minnesota were burned to the ground. It was the second largest insurance disaster in the history of America. And that happened because Walls refused to intervene. He refused to use the police. In fact, he went on TV and he said, these people, they have, a, they have a reason to have grievances. I'm a white guy. I apologize. And then he called for defunding the police. That's him. But let me tell you what he did during COVID. During COVID, he was the worst governor in the country. He mandated all the masks and all of the closures and all the vaccines, even though school kids were committing suicide. He was told about that. He still kept it up. But during that time, we have a huge Islamic community in the state of Minnesota. He's made it very easy for the Islamic community to come into this state. And we've had such problems with fraud being committed by this community. They had over $100 million in fraud in phony daycare 
centers that they set that they set up and they didn't. Then during COVID, the worst fraud in America happened under Tim Waltz. The Somalis said that they were feeding kids. They said they were feeding more kids than even exist in Minnesota. And it was over $250 million. Wolf didn't fire anybody. He didn't bring charges against anybody. He covered for them. And now we're in the midst of another fraud from the Somalis. Hold on. Don't, don't stop. Michelle, I want to carry this through after the break. This is very important. You're an expert on this clown. And the media are already lying. They got a lie for her. They've got a lie for him. Because she demonstrated, even though, oh, she's flip-flopping. No, she's not. She's just lying. Look what she just picked as her running mate. Michelle Bachman and I will be right back. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877-381-3811. With us is former representative from Minnesota, Michelle Bachman, dean of the Robertson School of Government at Regent University in Virginia Beach. Really laying out the facts, the real resume that this guy Tim Walls has, uh, not the media cover-up. But I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. We had a hard break, Michelle. Go ahead and continue where you were. Well, Walls is involved throughout his entire governorship of covering up some of the fraud in the Islamic communities in Minnesota, and it is the worst fraud in America under COVID. It was well over $250 million that was stolen by members of the Somali community. He had covered up for them on prior fraud. No one was ever fired. No one was ever indicted or taken to jail. No legal system. The most recent one is an autism program where, again, money is being stolen hand over fist out of that program. This is why it's important. When you look at Kamala Harris's choice, she had Josh Shapiro, and he had served in the Israeli Defense Forces. And so what we've seen really in this election cycle is unlike any other cycle, a coup occurred of one of our major political parties, the Democrat Party. And what we've seen is that both political parties were pro-Israel to different extents, but pro-Israel. This year, there is an influence from the Islamic community, and they have pushed aside the pro-Jewish sensibilities. And instead, they have in Harris the bad cop when it came to Israel and the Biden administration. She would she would give Hamas talking points and demand of Netanyahu that he follows Hamas's talking points and tell him that, look, you got to lose this war against Hamas. And who does she choose for her running mate? Not Shapiro, who is in the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces. She chooses another pro-Islamic candidate. So from the top of the ticket, Harris, to the bottom with Walls, neither one of them is pro-Israel. They are pro-Islam. This is a radical change for the Democrat Party. It's never taken this stance. And people need to understand when it comes to Israel, We've now lost one of the major political parties, and once they get into office, they will not be pro-Israel. They've demonstrated that throughout their careers. So this is a huge form. You are, you are 100 percent correct, which is why Bernie Sanders, Talib, Omar, and the rest are so thrilled with this guy, uh, the, the governor of Minnesota, because uh, he's identical to he's Kamala perfect. Harris in her hate for the state of Israel. Now, before we lose time here, this guy, Walls, also has these very close connections with communist Chinese defending them. They're not our adversary. What's that all about? Yeah. Well, he's made. Now, think of this. This is a guy who was a public school teacher, not making a lot of money. And he had the ability to go to China not once, not five times. He's gone 30 times to communist China. And he and his wife went over there, I believe, um, around the time of their marriage. So this is a long-term relationship that he has. That's part of the Biden problem. He was bought and paid for by the communist Chinese. Well, Shazam, here we have Tim Walz cut out of the exact same communist Chinese cloth. It isn't like he goes to Israel 30 times. He has gone to communist China 30 times. This is, this is his foreign policy, pro-communist China and pro Hamas and the Islamic agenda. We've never had a ticket that has been so obvious. And, and by the way, for the media, 
Michelle Bachman is 100% correct. 100% correct. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, uh, the other thing that Tim Walls put through here in Minnesota, I want every business owner and every employee to listen to this. He put through a paid medical family leave act and sick in, uh, policies forcing every business in Minnesota, whether it's religious, whether it's a big business, medium business, small business, or government, they all have to pay for their employees to be gone up to five months a year. Wow. You heard me right. And the employee gets to elect, and the employer can't ask any questions. So if the employee says, hey, someone in my family, and the employee gets to define family, it might be a friend, it might be an aunt, they, for whatever reason they want, they can say that they're not coming to work that day. And they can have over five months, that's over 20, 21 weeks and one day off for sick medical family. And they can do that. And you know, this guy sounds like, sounds like Maduro to me. Oh, exactly. I'm not kidding. I mean, sounds like Maduro to me. Uh, because, and so Minnesota will look like Venezuela in very short order. I mean, just walking around, you know, I, me- I remember Hugo Chavez walking down the streets when he took over early on. That building is ours. That building is I see that building. Yeah, we now control that. You know, it's the same thing, effectively, where he's walking around saying, okay, now you, this business, you're going to do this. Whether you afford it or not, you're going to do this. What is this? It's so sick. It even gets down to tampons in the boys' bathroom. Yeah. In yeah, public schools? Yeah. Did I hear that right? So, exactly. For fourth grade boys' bathrooms, there's going to be pa- tampons in there. Because the other thing Walls did is he made Minnesota a transgender sanctuary state. Mm-hmm. Anyone can come to Minnesota and get mutilated in their body and ca- chemically castrated. But also, he made it so that for Minnesota parents, any Minnesota parent who objects, the child will be removed from the parent. And if anyone comes to Minnesota to get this this uh, surgery, then that child becomes a ward of the state until all of that process is over. And so that if a parent changes their mind in the process, too bad. You've lost your, your, your kid. So what fascism means for people who don't understand, it means uh, private ownership but government control. That's the, that's the definition of fascism. That's what Tim Walls has put into Minnesota. So we can still own our home. We can still our own our business. But it is controlled completely mm-hmm. by the government. And it's cha- that's why we saw 19,000 people leave year before mm-hmm. last. And last year, 30,000 people left and took $2 billion well, in assets. Michelle, by this is why she chose him. She chose him because yeah. he's an out of your mind crackpot extremist. Because he's and so crazy. the and so the idea that Pelosi vouches for him, I don't know what they're talking about. He's very moderate, or that George Stephanopoulos says this is a man with Midwestern values. Don't you love it when San Francisco and New York tell us what the Midwest is all about? Don't you love that? <laughs> I, I can tell you, as somebody who's known him personally, I flew on planes with him. I talked to him all through my eight years in Congress, this is an AOC-loving, radicals, radical. The Democrat Socialists of America, those are the people who backed AOC, mm-hmm. that they're thrilled that he is the person. And that's what happened over the weekend. It was going to be Josh Shapiro, mm-hmm. but it was really because he was a Jew. Because mm-hmm. I will tell I agree. you, this year, it's the Jew haters who won. They mm-hmm. want at the top of the ticket. They want at the bottom of the ticket. We've never seen this before, where a political party has been completely co-opted. And, by and Michelle Bachman, leader. they're telling us, oh, you can't say that because, uh, because Harris is married to a Jew. Look, I'm a Jew. I don't care who she's married to. We're talking about her politics. We're talking about her ideology. We're talking about, I mean, the, the prime minister of UK, who's another Israel Jew hater, his wife's Jewish too. You don't get a pass. Because you happen no. to fall in love with somebody who's a Jew. You don't get a pass. Well, your policies, your politics, your governance. That's what we're analyzing. That's what we're looking at. And it's abhorrent. Exactly. I, I went to Washington, D.C. to be in the House <clears> chamber <throat> when Prime Minister Netanyahu was there giving his speech. 
And there, as big as life, was the big absence of Kamala Harris. And why mm-hmm. is that? Because the Islamic community had said to her, they love it when, when Israel's insulted. She insulted Israel by not being present. And where was she? At a sorority sister meeting. That's mm. where she was, rather than being with the prime minister of Israel when Israel is in an existential crisis. So she is clearly... Well, well I've got to finish, but let's, let's put it this way. When it comes to condemning the uh, river to the sea, uh, Hitler youth that were marching in the streets, that were burning the American flag, raising the Palestinian flag, beating, chasing Jewish students, graffiti on our monuments, graffiti on synagogues. I don't remember Kamala Harris getting up, relentlessly condemning it and demanding actions be taken. I don't remember this guy, Tim Walsh, ever saying a damn thing about it. Am I wrong? No, not once. Not once. And when the 12 Druze kids were killed in Israel, Mm. it took Harris over 24 hours to even say anything Mm -hmm. about 12 kids being killed by an Iranian bomb. Has Tim Walls condemned the communist Chinese for uh, enslaving in in concentration camps two and a half million Uyghurs? No. No. I mean, if he has, he's he's, he's done it very rarely and very quietly. He's he's pro-communist China. All right, Michelle Bachman, we're going to have you back more often. You're too good not to be heard from, you know. And we we appreciate you here very, very much, my friend. Well, thank you. There's a reason why you're the great one. So thank you so much for having me on. But I want everyone to realize there is no moderate ever in Tim Mm. Walls. He's a radical's radical. He's a kook. All right. Thank you. God bless you. My best to your family. Michelle Bachman has always been a patriot. And she's always had courage. You know, they used to attack her, attack her, attack her. But that's what they do to patriots. These are unprecedented times. You heard Michelle Bachman. She's 100% right. By the way, I'll be leaving the Commonwealth of Virginia for the free state of Florida tomorrow as we tend to go back and forth. Are you a, uh, you know, you do this on the seasons? No, I do it. We have family in both locations and other locations, and so that's what we do. But I keep getting these warnings from American Airlines, Mr. Producer, that say your flight may be delayed, your flight may be delayed. I'm going, oh, my God, they're going to delay the damn flight. And I looked at the weather. Florida got through it. It was difficult. In some cases, it was terrible. That... Hurricane, I think it it got up to a one, but it went through sort of the west coast, cut through Florida and up parts of the east coast. It's caused a lot of rain and flooding and so forth, and some people did lose their lives. But I'm flying out tomorrow. None of that's going on. So they've repositioned planes. And then somebody I know who's flying on Friday to Florida, they're sending them the same warning. So why am I telling you this? It is my absolute 100% intent to be here on air tomorrow. Unless America Airlines stops me. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Realize, America, we're talking about two candidates. We're talking about Marxism, Islamism, socialism, the embrace it all. And for the American media, that's not radical. For Nancy Pelosi, that's moderate. The Democrat Party's become the Bernie Sanders Party, the Talib Party, the Omar Party, the AOC Party. And the media have become Pravda and Al Jazeera. It's okay. And for George Stephanopoulos, a multimillionaire, a phony journalist who was a hitman for Clinton, trashing women who Clinton molested. That's That's his resume. That's his pedigree, little fella. A guy like Tim Walls, who's a Marxist, an Islamist, who's an extremist, by every rational definition, is middle America. And these low IQ, low IQ reprobates in Washington and New York most of whom have served Democrats or will at some point, 
They get to tell us what to think, what to believe. J.D. Vance is the true American, you know, history, experiment, example. And they turn him into a woman hater, a minority hater. It just goes on and on and on. But here this guy, Tim Walls, who defends communist China, who took 30 trips there, who taught a course there, who was paid for by the communist China. It's okay. It's just like I said. This whole campaign is the Hunter Laptop. He's the Hunter Laptop. Kamala's the Hunter Laptop. In other words, the laptop doesn't exist. Anything on it doesn't exist. Leave Joe Biden alone. This media gave us Joe Biden. This media gave us Kamala Harris. Now this media want to give us Kamala Harris with a promotion. And then they want this this dim-witted buffoon at at Minnesota by way of communist China as the vice president of the United States. This country cannot survive this. And you know why? And you know what? That's why the media support it. It's Hate America, Inc., as I wrote in American Marxism. This is Hate America, Inc. Ladies and gentlemen, the truth shall set you free right here. We patriots, where we meet every weeknight, we salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel, our truckers, our brothers and friends in Ukraine and Israel. We have your back, even though this government does not. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.